Hey guys, Dan Monroe here from Movies, Music, and Monsters. A couple weeks back, I did an interview with the super cool YouTube channel Hux Pop Culture Cafe. Now, I know some of you guys might have already seen this on his channel, but I wanted to upload it right here as well. It was super fun to do, and we talked about all kinds of stuff like how and why the channel got started seven months ago, and even some kind of cool behind the scenes stuff. I'll leave a link to Huck's Pop Culture Cafe in the description, but in the meantime, grab yourself a bucket of stale popcorn and enjoy the interview. Thanks guys, see you soon. Hey, my friends, welcome back to the channel. I am Huck, and man, am I glad to have you here on this one. My guest today, Dan Monroe from Movies, Music, and Monsters. And if you've seen his channel, you know where I'm getting that from. If you are new to Dan and don't know who Dan Monroe is, I have created a sizzle reel that I will play for you just before our amazing conversation. And then you get to learn even more about the both of us. So sit back and relax and enjoy this great sizzle reel and the conversation that follows. Hey guys, Dan Monroe here talking about movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters. Before we get started, I want to let everybody know about all the videos I've got coming up. What happened to Tobor the Robot? Lost in Space, Land of the Giants, Planet of the Apes, Classic Universal Monsters, Ray Harryhausen, Hammer Horror Movies, V, Babylon 5, Starship Troopers, Logan's Run, Galactica 1980, Space Academy, Buck Rogers, Space 1999, Land of the Giants, The Time Tunnel, Saturn 3, Silent Running, all coming up, so stay tuned. Ah, HR Puffin stuff. One of my all-time favorites as a kid. So what the heck happened to the robot after Lost in Space? Whatever happened to Robbie the robot? Ah, the six million dollar man. Okay, guys, buckle up. This is going to be a good one. I am what you would call a original Star Wars fan. Apes that talk. How cool is that? Oh man, the Valley of Guanji. Definitely one of those super cool Saturday afternoon popcorn movies from the late 1960s, which always got a bad rap. Before we get started, I just want to put out a huge thank you to everybody who subscribed. Channel's taken off like crazy, thank you. For the past 10 years, I've had like five subscribers on my page. Like, maybe 10. But ever since I started posting all this cool Lost in Space stuff, it's gone crazy. I'm up to almost a thousand subscribers in like a week. Amazing that the channel is almost at 10,000 subscribers. 10,000! We could almost buy our own ship for that. We are approaching 75,000 subscribers in four months. Guys, 100,000 subscribers in less than six months. Unbelievable. Thank you. I really do appreciate that from the bottom of my heart, and it really makes me glad to be able to share some really cool content with you guys. Without you, there would be no this. Thank you. The Six Million Dollar Man definitely paved the way for some incredible action adventure series throughout the 1980s, including The A-Team, MacGyver, Magnum P.I., Knight Rider, Miami Vice, Airwolf, The Incredible Hulk, The Fall Guy, and so many more. We could be here all day, but that, my friends, is the topic of another video. I've got a whole ton of new videos coming up really soon that I know you guys are just gonna dig. Feel free to stop by anytime as we continue talking about movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters. Hey, my friends, welcome back to the channel. I am Huck. I am very, very excited that you are here for this particular video. Uh, I'm going to be joined by um, a very creative person here on YouTube, and his name is Dan Monroe. I think you guys are going to get a big kick out of this guy. But uh, look, without further ado, let's just bring him on right now. Here he is, Dan. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Uh, I cannot wait to talk about your channel and the direction you've taken it. It's really taken some great spikes. It, um, I, I, I'm surprised, quite frankly, because, you know, I had, a, I had a YouTube channel for years and it 
just sat there, you know, it was yeah. just you put up some music videos. And then about seven months ago in January, I put up a video about the Lost in Space robot that I, I built. This is the robot from Lost in Space. My sensors indicate you're attempting contact with Daniel Monroe. Daniel Monroe is currently aboard the Jupiter 2 and cannot take your call. However, if you leave your name, phone number, and a short message, I will compute the data into my memory banks and advise Dan that you call. This is the Lost in Space robot. And I got a notification from YouTube that you went from like, you know, 300 subscribers to like over 900. And if you go a little more, you can be monetized and become a thing. I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? So being yeah. me, being the kind of person that I am, I thought, all right, I spent about a month looking not a month, maybe a week, looking at other YouTube channels and going, okay, I like that, that not so much, that is way too negative. And uh, I started, and we're seven months later, and I'm well over 100,000 subscribers. Absolutely crazy, really unheard of. 131 videos, you are killing it, my friend. Well, That's, I'm, that's I'm, impressive I'm, growth. You know, people seem to like it. And one thing that I thought was really crucial when I started out to do this was, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and I always have been. I am what you would call a original Star Wars fan. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a fan of Disney Star Wars. Disclaimer, if you are, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, these days when I put Star Wars into YouTube and I bring up the big channels, it's nothing but negative. You know what? I know that you're looking for clicks and I know negativity sells, but I'm not going to do it. So I decided right off the bat that everything that I do, even if it's a movie like, I don't know, Silent Running or Galactica 1980 that clearly wasn't all that great, I'm going to find out what's good about that and talk about it. And I think the positivity, well, from what I've heard from the um, the subscribers, which are like friends and family to me now, they're, they're amazing, these guys. Um, they really like that aspect because they know when they sit down to put on one of my videos, it's not going to be negative, you know, too much negative. Oh, absolutely. That's what I do love about your channel is, is you approach everything, even like the Galactica 1981 and uh, Saturn 3. Like, like you, you understand <laughs> yeah. that there might be some negativity towards them, but you're like, but hey, let's just do a deep dive and check them out anyway. Um, right, now, yeah. you first started with your the B9 robot, right? So you, when you started your channel, like, so one one question is, what, what did you want it to be? Or were you just simply starting a YouTube channel? But then when oh. you rebranded it, I, I would feel like that that moment came with that B9 robot video. Well, um, yeah. And, and that I took off. That, so, yeah. yeah. When I say I had a YouTube channel, I, I didn't have a YouTube channel that I created. I just had a YouTube channel. My wife and I have a music studio here in New York where we teach voice and we teach guitar teach piano in fact we've had kids like our own students on american idol on the voice on america's got talent like on the tv show fantastic i was involved with music years ago and but it wasn't branded it was just hey here's some it, like facebook here's some stuff but mm -hmm. then when that particular series of lost in space stuff started taking off I thought, well, maybe there's something here, you know, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. Um, so I, I really try to. And if you look back at some of my very early videos from like right. seven months yeah. ago, I'm sitting here at my desk and my hair is really long and I got a T-shirt on and it, the channel kept growing. But I thought, all right. <laughs> I love when you one, dial it in. It's so good. You know, yeah, one of the things I always was told when I was a kid was I used to perform all the time. I, I'm, I'm a performer at heart. And people would say, you know, someday you got to have a late night talk show. And in a way, that's kind of what this is. It's me at a desk talking about cool stuff that, you know, um, everybody loves. Memories of, of these shows and movies are so ingrained in us you know from when we were kids I, I just think it's great to take a really positive aspect looking at this stuff bringing back as, as many memories as possible the nostalgia factor you know what i mean which i know there are a lot of channels a ton of them that deal with nostalgia that talk about the old shows and the old movies there are a ton of them but i wanted to find a niche that was maybe a little different that incorporated a bit of my uh, performance or some comedic elements and being on camera kind of like a big time like the set that i'm in it's it's not a 
that big set that you see me in all the time with the desk and the robots on either side. It's right. fake. I, I created all that in Adobe After Effects. I just sit over there at a desk in front of a green screen. But I wanted my point was I wanted it when people tuned in to go, oh wow, look at look at that. That's cool. That's cool. I want I wanted that. I wanted people to go, you know what? That's cool. And it ended up being one of my catchphrases like way back in the day mm -hmm, here comes. The day, three months yeah. ago <laughs> i was right. doing a show on something robbie the robot or something and i made a point and i just to myself said oh, blah 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 how cool is that how cool is that and all of a sudden how cool is that became really popular like there's cups and t-shirts now with how cool is that on it i'm like what in the world so i have to make sure i put that in every one of my videos you mean uh, this set right here? Look at that. Right. Look at that. Yeah. Can you go back to that? Sure. So, yeah, the robot is my robot. That's the one you see behind me. I green screened him in. The Robbie, and this is awesome, that Robbie is the actual 1956 Robbie from Forbidden Planet. I took that picture from a Bonham's auction, and I made his sensors spin digitally. Nice. The, the Jupiter 2 on the floor is one of the actual Jupiter 2s. If you look up above, if you look up above me, you see Colossus from the Forbin Project, the little ball. That's what that is. I yeah, keep trying to Colossus. figure out that, that that orb. Yeah, and then the background is some random picture of some home theater that I blurred out. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and then behind behind me for every show, I'll put um, you know a picture of what I'm talking about, and I'll put stuff on the desk. But I don't know. I might change it up every couple of months, but it seems to be working. So the thing behind you is that actually a giant curved tv screen or is no. that also part of your no smoke everything mirror? you're looking at is digital <laughs> um i kind of i kind of go way back with video production and video editing and i'm a, i'm a big fan of after effects so you know and that, that's one thing i hear a lot about a, a lot from people you know when they email me crazy thought i actually emailed them back you know i, I do i'm like hey th hey thanks for writing i really appreciate it and they're like oh my god you wrote back. I'm like, what? Yeah, I wrote back. And they're like, well, we figured yeah. you'd be too busy. All your staff. I have no staff. All your staff. Yeah. None. You're no, it. No, no. I, me. That's it. Staff of one. I write the shows. Yeah. I research the shows. I film the shows. I edit the shows. I create everything. I download the pictures. I mean, it's just me. So, you know, I check my email. If you write to me, I'll get, I'll get back to you, you know? Now, I wanted to say, because you mentioned earlier, you and your wife, you have some singing. Uh, I encourage people when you go to Dan's channel, also look like um, I did some deep diving on your stuff. And, and I loved your shallow and um, ah, thanks. because. Oh, oh, because. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, nice. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? It won't be long before another day And we gonna have a good time Because the world is round It turns me It is, and I I leave them there for, to me, a personally nostalgic reason. Um, years ago, like in 1990, uh, I began a musical career. There was a big competition that I won, and during those years from the 1990s on, um, did a lot of touring and playing with people like George Jones, Conway Twitty, Burton Cummings, and the Guess Who, American Woman, that guy. Yeah. That, but music was my thing. I really, really enjoyed music, and I had sort of a tenor voice. I used to do a John Den believe it or not, I did a John Denver tribute show. <laughs> nice. I, didn't, I, I didn't dress up like him, but I sang. I when I sang, I kind of sounded like John Denver. To make a long story short, about three years ago, I literally woke up one day, went down to the studio, and my entire upper range of my voice had disappeared. What? Oh, I thought, well, I have a cold, you know, I, who knows? Let it go. Month after month after month, it's just gone. If I try to raise my voice up into the, mm, no, nothing yeah. there. So I thought, crap. I don't know what happened. I saw specialists and they all said, like Columbo would say, I don't know. We just don't know. It just kind of happened that way, you know? <laughs> um, 
speaking of Colombo, got Colombo video coming out this weekend. Um, so I, at the exact moment, kind of, that I lost everything that I was doing with music other than teaching, that went away. And I'm like, now what? This shows up. Unbelievable how life works, you know? Absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I, I just want to comment on how polished your videos, you can tell you have a performer background. Like just from the get-go, when you do your movies, music, and monsters, <laughs> there, there's a there's a dead-on delivery that you, it's like you bring it, it's like a signature, like each little thing. How cool is that? How cool is that? Yeah, it's Piece rehearsed. You know, I, I, um, I hate to admit it, but I kind of come from a theater background in college. You know, we did all the right. theater stuff. Um, but after college, I got into performing at a local amusement park called Fantasy Island. And I was hired out of college that at Fantasy Island, there was, as part of this amusement park, a Western town. And they had a Western town stunt show. Okay. And this would have been 1987. And I was sitting in my college cafeteria and a guy came up to me and he goes, hey, you're really tall. You want to be a cowboy at Fantasy Island? I thought, wait, a, a what? Where? Yeah, what? Sure. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I went down and I got I, I auditioned and I became the marshal of Western Town who would nice. shoot the bad guy off the roof and do all the we would do stunts to deputize the kids. That was 1987. A few years later, I looked around and I thought, I can do this. So I took over the company. Started writing my own shows, directing my shows. What? I ran, and then I ran all the entertainment at Fantasy Island for over 30 years, up until just a few years ago. In fact, if Dang. I'm walking down the street here in my town, people will still go, hey, Marshall. Crazy. Nah. A lot of fun. So I, I do have a performance aspect, but it took me probably a couple of days to figure out exactly how to say movies, music, and monster. I mean, you got to rehearse it. You just, right. you know, so, <laughs> right. so yes. It's a bit of it is a bit of a yeah. performance thing. Movies, music, and monsters. Um, let's talk about the uh the YouTube award. When you pass the hundred K, you've got your great silver button there. I what did. was that um, like when you got that? Was that a thing or were you like, eh, you um, know? That's there, there it is. You, there you go. Um, yeah. Um it's fine. It's okay, but yeah. it's not as important as keeping my subscribers happy when you know i i could get a hundred of those and hang them all over the house it's a thing it's shiny it looks cool but to me when i go into the comments or my emails and i actually hear positive things from people that have enjoyed the content that i'm doing that is worth a thousand times more than that i mean don't get me wrong it's nice it's cool it's very heavy um, and people are like, oh, great. You can put it behind you in the videos like everybody. At no, no, you know, no. no, no, it's no. nice to show it off. But what you've got to no. look that you've got to maintain and throw no, that no. shiny button behind you is kills it. Yeah, so. but you know what, though? It's not that. Yeah. And the reason is because if, if you knew me as a person, despite my years of performance and doing all kinds of things where I'm always involved with the public, I'm so used to looking out at groups of people, you know, being in performance. I don't have that kind of an ego. And I am so glad that I don't have that kind of an ego because I would be a monster if I did, you know, yeah. I, I have been to certain conventions where I've seen, Hey, that's that YouTube guy. It's a jerk. You yeah. Know, oh yeah. On. The only reason you and I are doing this is because of them. And I remind them yeah. of that constantly. You know, I always, I'm yeah. constantly, I'll put things up on my community page that simply say, Hey, haven't told you guys how much I appreciate you this week. Cause if it weren't for you, there'd be no me, you know? Oh yeah. So now, uh, you know. now when you are uh, seeking out your next topic, let, let's get into the juicy little pop culture. Cause obviously my channel is the pop culture cafe. And I wanted that so I could just, pretty much talk about anything I wanted to talk about, which is what you're doing. So when you sit down for your, the next idea percolate, how, what is your, what is your process? Do you, do you have a notepad and you've got like 50 things and then you feel it out and then how do you do the research? Cause it's, they're so well researched. It is mostly attributed to my subscribers. They, oh. they send me, yeah, they're like, Hey, do this. I'm like, ah, 
never seen it, never heard of it. But, you know, I did some recently um, that I had never really been involved that much with. But there was uh, Arc 2. You know, I mean, I oh, never yeah. watched Arc, Arc 2. I never watched it. But it, it's cool <laughs> because then you dive in and you learn stuff about it. And it makes one of my subscribers happy. Great. There's one. How cool is that? So most of, most of them come from them. I do have a list that I maintain, which is unbelievably long at the moment. I'd um, imagine. I'm trying to space them out. A lot of the horror stuff, I'm going to do Halloween time, that kind of thing. Um, once I get an idea, it takes me about three days to do a finished video. Um, God, which may, which, well, which to a lot of people may seem like a lot because I know that most YouTube channels, they do this. They set up a camera. They got a mic going. They talk. They throw in a couple pictures. It's done. I, I can't do that because there's too much of the, the digital, you know, the editing, that kind of thing. Um, I've only got one camera. So whenever you see it cut back and forth, it's cutting in and out. It gives the illusion of more than one camera. Right um, on, yeah. So my, my process is basically I'll get an idea and I'll spend the first day, all day, sitting here in front of my computer researching. Um, Wikipedia, some... Um, just literally putting into Google the name of the show and just going crazy. Um, I have voice recognition software. And one thing that really helps me, especially when delivering uh, a per performance, is um, I'll wear a headset and turn the voice recognition on. So as I'm reading something about that show, I'll read it the way I would say it. So then it kind of prints it out for me. Like that's oh, exactly how okay. I would say it. So. I, I'm not really winging it. I, I do use a script to some extent, but the script is written exactly the way I would say it. So hopefully it comes across sounding natural, you know, where it yeah. doesn't sound like you're reading that kind of thing. The second day I film and then that entire evening, which takes hours is I have to create whatever background I'm going to use for that show, find the stuff I'm going to put on my desk and then go through the chroma key green screen removal of you know 40 minutes of footage which will eventually be cut down the next day to 18 throw in as many pictures as i can find throw in interviews and then hopefully by the end of the third day it's ready to go hopefully don't see much of my wife but <laughs> well i i do feel they come together exquisitely i think you can see your your passion when you're putting them together uh similar to you like i have this thing i mean yeah i do this live but i do a lot of edited stuff too and oh, yeah. you never know like it's always like the things i do the least work on get a lot of views and the thing right. i will absolutely love like i went to a few years ago peterson museum had the james bond exhibit out here in california oh. and i did a full like video it, it is awesome like it, it's got the cars and the boats and the the props and the, everything the submarine was there i'm like okay i'm gonna go shoot this thing it's gonna be i think it's like just under 20 minutes or around there uh I, like one of the best things i've ever cut and i put it out one week before daniel craig's last bond movie i'm like mm. this is gonna go viral it's perfect the timing is perfect and it's still one of the least viewed things and i'm it blows my mind <laughs> You know, yeah, I, uh, I, I had a very rude awakening kind of early on. Um, I was doing shows, doing shows, and then I kept saying, Well, my wife would say, Hey, when are you going to do the big stuff? Star Wars, Star Trek, Beatles. I'm like, I'm waiting, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait to do the big stuff because I know that's the stuff that's gonna fly. So I did my I put so much work into my first Star Wars video. I even talked about Disney and kept it positive. And I threw <laughs> it out there and it did absolutely nothing. Uh, okay. Mm. All right. Mm, all right. Well, you know what? Ah, no, nope. stay positive. It's simply yep, yep. bad, simply bad timing. Ha ha. Star Trek. All right. I found out all about that. Everything I could find out about the shuttlecraft. I found out where it was, what happened to it. Everybody loves the Star Trek shuttlecraft. God, I spent days on it and threw it out there, and it did less than nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, Beatles, Beatles. Huh. You know, every every couple of years, my wife and I, in fact, we're going in two weeks. Hey, London guys, we're going to be in Bristol in two weeks. Uh, come say hi. And we go to Abbey Road because I know people who work there. Like I'm walking around Abbey that. Road, so I did a That's video a about video. behind the scenes at Abbey Road. It didn't do anything. I love so, that video. I was so uh, yeah. good. 
I, I liked it too. But here's what I found out. What's that? If you talk about topics that are already too heavily covered, you're Absolutely. dead. Nobody yeah. is talking about Saturn three. <laughs> nobody that, that is, is talking. <laughs> nobody's talking about the bionic dog. Nobody's talking about yeah. Columbo or what happened to Gort from the day the Earth stood still. That was or, awesome. You know, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. But you know, you go to you go to talk about Star Wars. There's no point. Everything's been said. You know, even my fans. I think when they go, oh, Beatles. Yeah, well, you know. So I I, tr <laughs> I tend to stay away from the super big topics. Yeah, I just you know, watched your Six Million Dollar Man. Oh yeah, and uh, and it it dives deep, man. Uh, and you love Bigfoot just like me. I mean, who didn't love Bigfoot? The tunnel that they go through is that ride at Universal, which I've gone through many times. And every time, all I can think of. Oh, is it still is there? That. Not anymore. Not uh. anymore. The tunnel now is what they've built the um, Fast and Furious exhibit oh, in, like the. the, the tram goes in there and then you're now you're surrounded by screens everywhere it's so cool so. because in the show if you look on the floor you can see the tracks they just covered it with a blanket right <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> have you been to it when it was there oh no no because the the one it, it's like if you just keep looking straight forward and while it's turning you definitely start to feel like like your tram car is doing this oh okay i got it. like oh, if, so it, it, was a ro it was a rotational thing yeah yeah because it's fully rotate and like if you break the illusion and look down at the ground like you say yeah. then it stops and you're like okay reality but as soon as you look up like it's a very trippy thing it does what actually got your channel started i mean and how long have you been around uh, I, I started about three and a half years ago, rebranding oh, wow. it like you. I think I've had it since 2009 or something like that. Uh, just putting up mashups like I would mash up Star Trek and the A-Team. What if, you know, I would use the, the theme song to the A-Team, but put Star Trek images on it. It's one of the few videos I've got over a million views on, which is pretty cool. But I can't monetize something like that because I'm using the copyright music. Right. But I, I love just sort of playing with the, the what ifs and and mashing two things up i did a, a star wars with the gilligan's island theme on that and uh it's so funny because I, the the first at a team star trek i did some a lot of people downloaded it and then reposted it on their oh. own channels and oh. one person one person but would not give, give me you credit, credit though oh, not yeah. none in fact he kept said people kept complimenting him dude good job on that and i was like so i called him out you know and i'm like bro i like it, it's me. Well, how do I know it's you? So here you go with the negativity. They're like, how do I know it's you? Well, because if you look for this video, the first time you'll ever see it is on my channel. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But you have to convince and then it just became a thing. So it, it can be crazy. We you know one of the weirder things about this whole experience is the fact that I, there are people out there or companies or bots or something that duplicate you. Like <laughs> people contact me all the time and they say, Hey, in the comments, why are you offering a ten dollar discount in some Chinese country? And I look, and you know, it's movies, music. But there's a picture of me. I'm like, well, that's yeah. not me. So yeah. you gotta, you know, you gotta try. Have you had that happen? Uh, I I had it happen not for my channel, but from an, there's another channel I I listen to a lot, and they say, hey, you know, uh, leave a comment and all this stuff at at, at a, a million view, you know subscribers. Yeah. We're going to give away a PlayStation Five. And then so I got an email or something saying, hey, you won. You won. You won the PlayStation. Just contact me and uh, need you to pay for like shipping or something like that. Yeah, of course. Instantly, I knew that was not right. Yeah. So I contacted the YouTuber and told him. And ever since then, you will hear him telling people that that if you get yeah. things like that, do not accept them. Because I let him know. I let him know that stuff was happening. Yeah, so. I, I put posts up on the computer on the community page. I love the community page, by the way. It's awesome. Do you use it? Like, I, I I need to use it more uh, this year. I, it's great. It's like, I, I have a lot of movie goals, right? And this one, uh, like this year, uh, you would ask, like, what made me start this? As I saw a lot of people doing this kind of thing, but like you, I have a performer background, so I wanted to just sort of bring my personality to that thing. And it's such a great community now because I, I have people on my show, legit friends now. Like, we, I have friends that I, I text daily on Instagram that I've met on YouTube and uh, Instagram that I don't even like do that to friends that live here with me. Right. right. Because yeah. we've just have this common thing. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's what got me to start it. But 
Yeah, that's that's amazing. The amount of people that have reached out to me and the amount of, you know, people in the business that that like I'll post something like I'm going to do King Kong, whatever it was, 79. What was it? What was the second King Kong movie? I'm going to do a King 76. Kong movie. 76. Yeah, yeah, so you know, I, but then I but then people reach out to me and they're like, "Hey, I was the executive producer of key lighting on that film. Here's some pictures." It's amazing the people. Uh, I I ran a, a guy named Kelly Delcom who has a uh, works for Block Four was the one that provided me all the incredible restoration images of the alien head, and uh, he oh, that was, was the so guy. That, he was the guy that put together the whole um, uh, six million dollar man exhibit from the last movie. Just and he, he's got there's a really obscure movie from I think seventy seven called The Island of Doctor Moreau. I don't know. Did oh, you yeah. ever see that? Oh, Burt yeah. Lancaster. Mm-hmm. Just just love that movie. Yeah. Terrible, really, but so right. great. That that one's coming up. But he's got pieces from that that were restored parts of the animal masks. So you know, it's amazing the amount of doors that have been opened. It really is. So so with that, so when you're making it. And you don't tell people it's coming, or maybe you do, and that's how they find you. Like, how do they know you're about to do that and supply you with it? Or is that part of your research and you find them and ask no, them? No, it's the community page. Oh, the community page. All right. One wow. week, one week before, like four days ago, I put up that my next video that I'm doing is everybody's favorite lieutenant, just one more thing, uh, Colombo. And um, so I got reached out from <laughs> Colombo people. But, you know, the community page, one thing that really helps me as a, w- what do they call us? In, c- not influencer, creators. What are we? We're just. Well, yeah, what well, we are. We're creators. YouTubers, creators. Yeah, YouTubers. And, Sorry. And, you know, one thing that really, that really lets me know how a video is going to do in the future is the reaction of the number of likes from the, up, the next video topic that I put up. So if I put up something that says, um, coming next week, Land of the Lost, I can judge by the number of likes on it if it's going to be a good video. If it's over a 1,000 likes, it's going to be a good video. Yeah, you know, so just so y'all know, I'm popping it up right now. And Dan's so right. It's like I'm looking at Columbo, and you got 1.2 thousand likes on Columbo. Okay, so that means that one's going to be – Okay, that one's going to be pretty good. But if you go down and look at the $6 million man, it's like 1.7. So I'm like, all right, that's a big one. You know? Yeah, and I like how you actually got a shot of your editing software <laughs> with, yeah, with Steve Austin you know, up there. You know, I am someone who is infatuated with – um tv and sp- and movie behind the scenes stuff like when i buy a Same. blu-ray i'm watching the bonus features baby yes sir and, a lot, of pe- yes, and sir. a lot of people are like hey how do you do this i'm like all right well it's this it's me at a desk with eight monitors <laughs> you know editing all day yeah and and people don't understand like editing is is a is a skill you know you've got to have patience you got to have all your elements music <sighs> effects transitions yep. clips you know it's it's a lot of work ingesting all that and then cracking the knuckles and go okay how do i want this to look you know the thing yeah. is is that and I, I am nowhere near the point where i could have employees i'm just i'm not i mean it, um the the channel does provide income there's there's no question um mostly from the sponsors Oh, that's you know, nice. Let's talk about that. Resp- who like <laughs> you, you know yeah. when I first when I first got my early first couple of checks or payments from YouTube, I'm like, oh, wow, that's okay. We're we're spending an extra week in London, but then <laughs> um, nice. I start. You know, I have a company that works with me on my behalf as the middleman um, called Algebra Media, and they are the ones that reach out to you and they say, hey, um, Squarespace they're interested you talk about them for 90 seconds they pay you x and i remember thinking 90 okay. seconds <laughs> yeah sign me up and you know I, but but yeah. i will say in my defense um especially with a product i did called ag1 which is that green drink that you drink for your health it's all the vitamins and that stuff yeah yeah, yeah. i will i will not do anything for a product that i don't either personally use or believe in a lot of people do and and i'm losing a lot of money because of it they reach out to me and they go hey about how about this I'm like no no that's not me you know so hey how about this new gambling app <laughs> no 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 pass and and you know what that's money but i'm not going to do it because i don't believe in the product I'm not going to do it 
I'm happy to hear that. And I know the people that would watch your channel know that too, because I, I saw that that drink you had. So oh, it's so awesome. How does that make you it feel? Every day. Nice. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people have said, hey, you should start another channel on politics. <laughs> Oh Lord! No, no, God, <laughs> no, 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 no! There's a Wait, ton which, of those you, too. But you know what the yeah. sad part is? I would probably have That's a million it. by now if I went wow. that route and did commentary on this garbage politic crap. You know what I mean? You'd yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not doing it. Like ah, oh, shoot me. No. Yeah, yeah. There's so yeah. many already. Again, yeah. like you said, you have found a nice little niche that is catering to people that really want to see these things. Right, so right. Uh, with that, I'll have two more things for you. One is um, let's talk about your nice, sweet little merch because uh, it's, I, I can't turn the camera, but behind me are all these mugs. So for oh, example, come on. no, no, oh, yeah. no, no. no oh, yeah. oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, so because my thing's called the morning mug, I've started yep, to yep. collect mugs. And so now I'd love to like, of course, order one of your, how cool is that? Because I love showing off mugs now nice. uh, in the morning. Nice. So, yeah. And I really, I really don't have anything to do with it. A merch company said, Hey, if you upload some logos, we'll just do it. I'm like, no way. Okay. Because, you know, again, though, you'd have to know yeah. me as a person. The merchandise is to me personally, a little embarrassing. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, a little because i'm little. just me i'm just me i'm not i'm not i don't have that you know what i mean um like i'm going to a convention this weekend and i'm scared to death i'm going to see somebody with a how cool is that t-shirt i wouldn't know whether <laughs> i wouldn't know whether to say how cool is that or oh my god I, I i've become a product you know but um yeah it's cool i would never have done that on my own but some company said hey we'll we'll do it and so all right well i i just sort of dial it in like this just think of it as a way to sort of like um, it's, it, it's a brand, like your channel's a brand now right, and, right. and people love to sort of like celebrate their, their fondness of things, whether that's a, a hat, a t-shirt, a mug or whatever. Yeah, and I, and I, when you see them at your, start... at your convention, they're going to come I, up to you and they're going to have that t-shirt and you're just gonna have to go. Cool. How cool yeah, is that? That's, <laughs> that's, that's what my wife says. She, she says, you, you yeah. know, you have to, you have to understand that it's just a thing that represents something that people like. You know what I mean? It's just I'm not used. To, I'm not used to it yet. Would you be open to, if somebody said, "Damn, could you come and do a panel and talk to people that want to do what you do and like inspire them?" Sure. Oh, I would do a panel talk. Absolutely, I would definitely enjoy if the topic were right and if I knew something about it. You know, Lost in Space. You know, Star Wars, Beatles, whatever. I I could talk for hours. That's my thing. Now, Dan, before I let you go, one last thing yeah. is you, you have, I'm sure, a nice little list. Columbo's coming up. Can you just give the audience one little tease about something coming up you'd love to do? I next absolutely part? can do that. In fact, if you want to, okay, here it is right here. Um, I'll give you more than just a taste. Let's see. Mm. Future shows. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Angry Red Planet. The Dark Crystal. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts, uh, Quartermass in the Pit, awesome movie. Them, the big ants, uh, Creature Absolutely. from the Black Lagoon. Oh, fantastic voyage because I know what happened to the Proteus ship. Um, Ooh, an incredibly nice. bizarre TV movie from the 80s starring Dirk Benedict turning into a snake called. Do you remember that movie? It's called. I do remember. Yeah, I remember. Yes. Um, what else we got here? Um, what, Westworld, um, Space 1999, Space Academy, Dark Shadows. Ah, you know, one of my biggest videos was Puffin Stuff. To this oh, yeah. day. You know, so, okay, I got um, Lidsville, Sigmund the Sea Monster, UFO. <laughs> for, yeah, no, UFO for you British fans. Uh, Thunderbirds. Yeah. Oh, cool. Prop stuff that I'm going to do videos about. Um, super cool guy named Fred Barton, who actually has a business who builds life-size Robbie the Robots for people. Um, just museum pieces. Um, he was the guy, if you look in my Forbidden Planet Robbie the Robot videos, who at a very young age restored the original. The original. So wow. Okay. So we're going to do all about uh, how Robbie was restored, uh, what happened to the Discovery spaceship from 2001, um the the chair from the original alien mother remember the mother they would talk to mother know where that is mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, all kinds of stuff the flying sub uh what else we got here the thing from outer space oh the hammer horror movies that's coming up in october oh, yeah, and, yeah. 
Enemy Mine, The Last Starfighter, and so many more. We could be here all day, but that, my friends, is the topic of another video. Fantastic. Dan, thank you so much for being here. Uh, again, I'm going to leave his information in the description below. So please, if you haven't had a chance to go to Dan's channel, get over there, click it, like, subscribe, check out his community tab and all that good stuff. He's well worth your time. He does amazing work. Dan, thank you again for being on the show. I appreciate you your time. Absolutely. Please feel free to stop back anytime as we continue together the conversation on movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters. Danger, danger. <laughs>